Welcome inside the Levy Center tonight, a WCC showdown as the Santa Clara Broncos returning home after a successful three-game road swing take on the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Gonzaga ranked 17th in the country, comes in with a perfect 11-0 record in conference play. I'm Joe Rizzo welcoming you to our WCC Network broadcast. It's the Broncos and the Zags from the Levy Center. Stay tuned. We'll have the starting lineups in the opening tip next. Back here at the Levy Center, the Santa Clara Broncos ready to kick off the month of February, and they'll do so with a challenging two-game homestand against the top two squads in the conference. Up first, a matchup against 11-0 Gonzaga, 10-1 Portland will then be in town on Saturday. So a difficult portion of the schedule, but the Broncos playing well. They've won three out of their last four, including notable road wins against San Diego and BYU on their most recent trip. And uh, very happy now to be back at home. Here are today's starting lineups. First four, Gonzaga coming in with a 21-2 overall record. They've won 14 games in a row and experienced starting five. Yvonne Ejim, junior forward at 17 points per game, leads Gonzaga in that category. Esther Little, a sophomore, recently inserted into the starting lineup due to some injury issues with this Gonzaga team. She averages just two points per game. Kaylin Trong, senior guard, 16 points per contest. Of course, very experienced players, played a lot of games uh, here in the WCC. Brenna Maxwell, certainly one of the leading contenders for WCC Newcomer of the Year. Transfer from Utah, 15 points per game, one of the top shooters in the country. And Michaela Williams, junior guard at eight points per game, rounds out the starting five for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Meanwhile, for Santa Clara, they come in at 13 and 10 overall, four and six in conference play. Familiar starting five for head coach Bill Carr, Laura Edmondson, who's been playing very well in recent weeks, averaging 12 points per game in conference play. Ashley Maldonado will help run the points, six points, three assists per contest for the junior guard from Sunnyside, Washington. Mariah Hudgens, freshman, recently inserted into the starting lineup, 10 points per game in conference action. It's been a very nice stretch for Mariah Hudgens. Ashley Haraki, the junior guard from San Jose, seven points per contest. And of course, the outstanding freshman, Tess Heal, fourth in the WCC at 16 points per game, won her eighth conference freshman of the week award 
just a few days ago. So that's the matchup here today, Santa Clara and Gonzaga. These are the top two scoring teams in the conference. There'll be a lot of points uh, here tonight. Gonzaga averages at 74 points per contest. Santa Clara just behind them at 72 points per game, as you would expect, two of the better shooting teams in the WCC. In fact, two of the better shooting teams in the, the country, really. Santa Clara leads the conference, averaging eight threes per game. Gonzaga has the best three-point shooting percentage of any team in the country, and that certainly stands out at 41%. Gonzaga uh, behind the arc, so that'll be something to watch here today. Uh, can uh, Santa Clara uh, avoid uh, getting the, uh, the Zags rolling? The Zags certainly can score in bunches. They're an outstanding rebounding team as well, something Bill Carr was highlighting over and over during shoot-around today. Broncos have got to have one of their better games on the glass if they are to hang tough here with the best team in the WCC. We're underway. The Broncos in their familiar home whites. Gonzaga in the road blues as Yvonne Ejim operating down low misses with the left hand. Hudgens saved the rebound, threw it away, but then it's stolen back. Uh, Ashley Haraki comes away with the basketball. And now Santa Clara's first possession is heels entry pass knocked away out of bounds. And the Broncos will keep it. This is the second meeting of two in the regular season between these two programs. They played back on January the 7th up in Spokane. And uh, the Broncos competed hard but fell behind early as heel again. Nice entry pass and Laura Edmondson finishes. Santa Clara on the board first. Gonzaga ended up winning that game by a 78 to 61 margin. Broncos found themselves down by 14 after the first quarter. Had to play catch up the rest of the day and it was just too large of a deficit to overcome. As Ejim operating down low ties the game. Ejim 16 and a half points per contest. That's third best in the WCC. And leads this Gonzaga team. She has been a force down low. The junior forward tied at two. Opening stages here from the Levy Center is heel driving. Left-handed runner no good. Gets her own miss, but again comes up short. And the rebound cleared by Little. Critical road trip for this Gonzaga team, putting their perfect conference record on the line. They'll be up the road in San Francisco this weekend. Next week, Gonzaga, a highly anticipated matchup with the Portland Pilots. Here's Ejim, baseline jumper, and she buries it. So back-to-back -back buckets for Ejim, and Gonzaga takes their first lead of the night at 4-2. to two. Here's Haraki back out to Edmondson. Edmondson drives, some contact off the glass. It's good, and the foul. Edmondson with all four of the Broncos points early on. And a chance to put Santa Clara back in the lead with a free throw. First foul on Maxwell. Something to note with this Gonzaga team. They are banged up. They've been dealing with really injury issues all season. And one of their regular starters not in uniform today. Eliza Hollingsworth suffered an injury last Thursday against... Uh, LMU, Gonzaga dressing only nine players here today. So if the Zags do get in any kind of foul trouble, that could certainly be a factor. Here's Little, normally comes off the bench, now starting. A lot of time spent uh, in the key, and uh, finally the whistle, a three-second violation. And the turnover gives the basketball back to Santa Clara. Five to four Broncos, all five points from Laura Edmondson. Here in the early going as Tess Heal brings it across. Up top, Mariah Hudgens. Hudgens three-point attempt is short and a rebound to Williams. Likely won't be many second chance opportunities for Santa Clara against this outstanding rebounding team. Here's Williams on the wing, down low to Ejim. Zaga has really run their offense through Ejim early, and she'll earn a trip to the line. The first foul whistled on Laura Edmondson. Santa Clara playing some of their best basketball of the season here of late. 
started on their most recent homestand when they throttled Pacific, carried that momentum on the road, won a couple of games that following week, beating San Diego, the nice second half comeback, and a dominant second half a few days later in Provo against BYU. In fact, the first win for Santa Clara as a program in Provo. And this, of course, BYU's final season in the conference. As Eachum hits both free throws, our first substitution now is Olivia Pollard in the game for Santa Clara, the sophomore forward. A little pressure here from Gonzaga. Santa Clara able to break it. Broncos bid for a four-game winning streak, though, came up short last weekend. They lost at San Francisco. They're a turnover and a run out now for Gonzaga. Bulldogs leading 6-5 to five early. Williams comes up short. Heel crashing the glass, but unable to corral it. And it's out of bounds. Possession to Gonzaga. 6.49 to go in the first quarter. And a 6-5 to five lead for the Zags. Trong will enter it in underneath her basket. Up top to Ejim, hands off to Maxwell. Maxwell, an outstanding shooter, and she buries her first look. Such a quick release. Maxwell shoots it at 52% from three-point range. Statistically, the best three-point shooter in the country. And you could see why with that stroke. As we get a foul on the drive, that'll be on Maxwell, which will be her second here in the early going. So mention foul trouble. And one of Gonzaga's top players with two fouls, not even four minutes into the game. Maxwell and Little will head to the bench. Callie Stokes, a redshirt freshman, enters for Gonzaga. Destiny Burton also into the game, and we get another Santa Clara turnover. Lexi Pritchard in as well for the Broncos. It's a 9-5 Gonzaga lead, 6-15 remaining here in the first quarter. And the top two scoring teams in the conference. Can Santa Clara keep up with this high-octane Gonzaga attack? Trong gets rid of it. Ejim now into the corner. Good ball movement. This is Williams for three, and she buries it. Michaela Williams, only 31% from three-point range. Not a huge part of her game. Makes it an 8-0 Gonzaga run. Hudgens trying to answer her shot off the rim and a rebound to the Bulldogs. Williams driving, and we get an offensive foul away from the basketball. And that was Burton trying to clear some space for her teammate. Not sure it was really needed. And the turnover gives the basketball back to Santa Clara. 8-0 run here for Gonzaga over the last two minutes. And the Bulldogs leading 12 to five. It's a full evening of Santa Clara versus Gonzaga. Two men's teams will play each other up in Spokane later on tonight. And two women's teams matching up right here, here at the Levy Center. Another Santa Clara turnover, an issue here early. They've turned it over four times in the first five minutes as we get a kicked ball. Broncos, on average, fewest turnovers in the conference. Only about 13 per game. Something they've got to clean up here early. Already trailing by a 12 to five margin. Inbounds to Ejim and too good of a look there. Ejim's got eight. Make it a 10-0 run now for the Zags. Here's Pritchard backing it out. She'll take the long two, rims out. Haraki rising high for the rebound. Can't handle it though, and Gonzaga comes away with the basketball. Past the midway point here, the first quarter. Broncos just two out of seven from the floor, plus the four turnovers. Ejim finds Callie Stokes, and in the lane, she knocks it in. And no answer right now for Santa Clara defensively. 12 straight points for Gonzaga, and a 16-5 Bulldogs lead. Similar beginning to this game for Santa Clara as what transpired in the first meeting between these two. Although in that one, it was mainly three-point shooting for the Zags early that got them going. 
Zaga operating mainly down low here early. They turn it over on this possession, and that'll bring us to our first time out of the night. 4.08 to go in the first quarter, 16 to 5 Gonzaga. This is Santa Clara basketball on the WCC Network. Twelve oh run for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. They've opened up a 16 to 5 lead in the first quarter. Broncos have gone nearly four minutes without scoring as Laura Edmondson checks back in. Edmondson has scored all five of the Broncos points here. Jess Heal will bring it across. Santa Clara trying to snap a 14 game losing streak to this Gonzaga program. Here's Pollard, corner three, and it's good. Santa Clara needed that. Pollard, 35th made three-pointer this season, tied with Ashley Haraki for the team lead. Ends that 12-0 Gonzaga run. Last time Santa Clara beat this Gonzaga team was in March of 2016. They beat them in the conference tournament in Las Vegas as Destiny Burton on the board with her first points. That was the year before Bill Carr took over this program. Coach Carr has yet to beat this Gonzaga team as the Santa Clara head coach. Haraki spinning, finds Lexi Pritchard, kicks it back out Pollard. She's open, bidding for back-to-back -back threes. That one rims out. And a run out for Gonzaga. They've got a 10-point lead. Stokes misses the runner. And a Santa Clara rebound. Gonzaga... Despite that miss, still shooting it at 70% from the floor, 7 of 10. Another attempt from Pollard. This one off the heel of the rim, and we get a foul underneath. Pretty good look there from Pollard. Broncos will take that. And the foul is on Laura Edmondson. That's a big call. Broncos top post player picks up her second already. So two fouls for Edmondson. And she'll have to sit as Mariah Hudgens back in. So some early foul trouble on both sides. Maxwell right now sitting with two on the Gonzaga bench. 18 to 8 is the Bulldogs lead. 240 to go here in the first quarter. Entry pass, down low to Burton. It's blocked. Olivia Pollard got a hand on it. Her pass, though, is immediately stolen by Kaylin Trung. And Trung on the board to make it 20 to 8. So great defensive play from Olivia Pollard, but had her pass stolen. Gonzaga very active defensively. Another deflected pass. Broncos keep possession. Araki around the screen finds heel. Neal, the Broncos' leading scorer. Good ball movement here. Pollard's open. Pollard for three. Second made three of the opening quarter for Olivia Pollard. Providing a spark off the bench. Pollard, who averages nine points per game. It's her first season with Santa Clara, the Washington transfer. And she single-handedly keeping the Broncos close here in this first quarter. 
As that pass knocked away in a Santa Clara steal. Broncos down nine with the basketball. Heel gets cut off. Up top to Pollard. She'll swing it to Pritchard. Still 20 to shoot. Pritchard driving. Left-handed runner off the window. Lexi Pritchard with her first points. A fifth-year senior. Pritchard had a big game in the San Diego win on the recent road trip with 13 off the bench. And a quick five points here for Santa Clara. Makes it a 20-13 to 13 game. Pritchard got a hand on the basketball there. Trong able to keep it. Minute five to go here in the first quarter. Williams avoids the trap. Burton in the paint. And another bucket for Destiny Burton. Averages just two points per game. Coming in off the Gonzaga bench. She's got four, though, already here tonight. Broncos down by nine. Final minute of the first quarter. Pritchard lost the dribble, gets it back. Looking for help now as she finds Hudgens. Ten on the shot clock. Broncos rotated. Here's Tess Heel. Three-point shot is good. Third made three of the first quarter for Santa Clara. And the first points tonight for a heel. Broncos starting to heat up now from deep. Up to 43% from the floor overall. Shot clock is off. 15 seconds to go in the first quarter. Broncos down by 12 at one point. Now only trail by six. Here's Stokes up top, four seconds, and we get a foul away from the ball, called on Gonzaga. That'll be the second foul on Burton. Both have been offensive fouls. Peyton Muma in for Gonzaga. Ejim also returns. Ashley Maldonado back in for Santa Clara. Broncos have time here, 4.8 to go. They enter it in, Maldonado quickly into the front court. Clock winding, and she misses at the buzzer. And that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. Nice little spurt, though, for Santa Clara at the end of the quarter. They close it well, only down by six, 22 to 16. Second quarter action is next here on the WCC Network. Second quarter underway here from the Levy Center. I'm Joe Rizzo, 22 to 16, the Gonzaga lead. Broncos, though, ended the first quarter on an eight to two run. Olivia Pollard leading the way offensively for Santa Clara with six on a couple of made threes. Ivana Ejim with eight. Starting uh, leading the way for Gonzaga is Ashley Haraki with her first points. Opens the second quarter with a made three. Broncos who Make about eight threes per game, number one in the WCC, and that's already their fourth three-point make tonight. Ejim down low, and she gets that kind of position nearly impossible to stop. Ten points for Ejim on four of five shooting. 
Gonzaga leading 24 to 19. Haraki drives, finds Pritchard, and Pritchard finishes with the left hand. Pritchard moving well without the basketball, finding the open spot in the lane. Nice pass from Haraki. Now we get another Gonzaga offensive foul. That is put three, maybe four illegal screens in this opening half. That one called on Ejim, her first personal. And the seventh turnover already on Gonzaga. Jade Kadi now in the game for the first time for Santa Clara, the junior guard. Broncos are within three now as Maldonado's pass knocked out of bounds. Still 19 on the shot clock. Tess Heal will now return for Santa Clara. Broncos four out of seven from distance. Struggled initially with some turnovers. Taking better care of the basketball though these last few minutes. And on a 13 to four run now, going back to the last couple of minutes of that first quarter. Kadee with the dribble, up top Hudgens, deep three, and it falls. Mariah Hudgens gets a friendly roll. High off the back rim, and then right through the hoop. Another made three for Santa Clara. Hudgens' first points, and the Broncos have tied the game, and now a ball thrown away. Santa Clara defense tightening up. Broncos at one point were down 20 to eight. But they have completely turned this game around. Now even at 24 with 8.18 to go here in the first half. Santa Clara up to 50% shooting. Gonzaga's shooting it at 71%. Turnovers, the major issue for the Zags. They've got eight. Broncos now with it. Here's Heal, three-point attempt off the mark. And a rebound to Maxwell. Maxwell back on the floor playing with those two fouls. We've yet to see Laura Edmondson come back in since picking up her second as we get another Gonzaga turnover in Aaron Pass. Bulldogs just cannot take care of the basketball right now. So right back to Santa Clara with, with the game tied at 24. Broncos still have a sub-500 record at home in conference play. Some very difficult home conference losses in late December. Trying to reverse their fortunes here at the Levy Center as that pass from Ashley Maldonado over the head of Jade Kadee. And Santa Clara gives it right back. Gonzaga turning up the pressure a bit as Haraki checks back in now for a Hudgens. Tied at 24 early second quarter action here from Santa Clara. Trong, nice pass down low. Ejim's shot though is blocked. Second block from Olivia Pollard here in the opening half. And a little bit of resistance now down low against Ejim. Maldonado will hoist and hit. And the Broncos have the lead here in the second quarter. Maldonado from deep. Santa Clara six of nine from three point range. Broncos ahead, 27-24. They've got Gonzaga on their heels a bit. Williams with it outside. Going around the screen. Pass deflected. Trong comes away with it. Now Ejim down low, six to shoot. Ejim, the baseline jumper, no good. Nice box out and a rebound from Haraki. Quickly ahead to Tess Heel. Back to Haraki. Rotates it now to Maldonado. Maldonado driving. Into the corner now, heel, baseline jumper, off the back rim, and a rebound a little. Good ball movement, though, from Santa Clara, and a nice look. Broncos will take that. Now Gonzaga, little outside. Here's Maxwell. Broncos have to close out on her. Williams thought about the three, now puts it on the floor. 12 to shoot, stepping inside the line. She misses. Ejim, big-time offensive rebound, though, and a finish. And that's Ejim's game right there. Second in the conference, averaging eight rebounds per game. Broncos defended well, but didn't close out. Santa Clara's lead is one. Bounce pass down low to Haraki and off the glass for two. Five points for Ashley Haraki. And the Broncos back up by three. 29-26, nearing the halfway point here the second quarter. 
Williams, three-point shot, off the back rim, rebound deflected and handled by Pollard. Broncos with a basketball up by three. Heel into the lane, some contact and a foul. And that'll be on Trong, which will be her first. Just the second team foul in the quarter on Santa Clara. Edmondson's going to check back in now for the Broncos. We'll play with those two fouls. Lexi Pritchard also returning for the Broncos. Santa Clara shooting it at 50% from the floor and six of nine from three-point range. The three-point shot is what erased that double-digit deficit. Now a sideline inbounds for Santa Clara. Up top here to Tess Heel. Heel hands off to Pritchard. Still 17 on the shot clock. Haraki on the other wing. Here's Maldonado driving. Ejim active hands. Up top Edmondson. Six to shoot. Good defense here from Gonzaga. Haraki nearly lost it and she double dribbles. She did lose it. And a Santa Clara turnover. So the Gonzaga defense tightening a bit here. 5.09 to go in this opening half. 29-26 is the Santa Clara lead. Both teams shooting it well. Both teams, though, also struggling with turnovers. Gonzaga's turned it over nine times already in this first half. Ejim down low, and it rolls off, but she'll head to the line. A foul, and that's going to be on Laura Edmondson. And that for Edmondson will be her third. Big call with 4.54 to go in the first half. Timeout here at the Levy Center. Broncos are up three. You're watching Santa Clara basketball on the WCC Network. Back here at the Levy Center. Nice Thursday night crowd on hand with Santa Clara leading Gonzaga, 29-26. 4.54 to go until halftime. Broncos at 4-6 and six in conference play. They've rebounded well since the 1-5 start. And they only sit one and a half games out of fourth in those WCC standings. Of course, finishing in the top four is crucial getting at least the double by with a top four finish. And that's still well within reach here for Santa Clara as they've just opened the second half of the conference schedule. And the Broncos certainly will be tested here at home this week. A matchup with first place Gonzaga tonight and then second place Portland will be here on Saturday afternoon. The combined conference records for Gonzaga and Portland 20 and one. A couple of free throws from Ejim. Santa Clara's lead is one. Now a trap and a turnover. The ball knocked off of Lexi Pritchard. So good defense there from the Zags out of the timeout. And they force Santa Clara's eighth turnover of the night. One point game. 
Possession here for Gonzaga. Ejim driving and finishing off the glass. Broncos have had no answer for Yvonne Ejim. She's got a game high 16 points now, six of nine from the floor. Puts Gonzaga back ahead. Maldonado down low and she'll get to the line. Broncos have also had some success getting to the bucket. And free throws coming now for the junior guard, Ashley Maldonado. First foul on Peyton Muma. Little's back in now for Gonzaga, replacing Muma as Maldonado gets ready for the two free throws. Look there at Lisa Fortier, the Gonzaga head coach, ninth year at the helm up in Spokane, has had tremendous success. Gonzaga's actually won 16 of the last 17 WCC regular season titles. A West Coast powerhouse currently ranked 17th in the country. The AP poll. Maldonado splits the free throws, ties the game at 30. Coming up on four minutes to go here in the first half. Ejim at the elbow, gives it up to Maxwell. Just that one three for Maxwell. We get a whistle, and I think this one away from the basketball. And it will be on Lexi Pritchard. It'll be a baseline inbounds here for Gonzaga. Just the second team foul for the Broncos in this second quarter. Inbounds to Ejim. Her jumper rims out. Rare miss from Ejim and a rebound from Haraki. Quickly head to Maldonado. Couldn't handle the pass. And now Santa Clara will set up the offense. Trying to take back the lead here. Heel down low and Heel finishes. Seen it all year with Tess Heel, her ability to get into the lane and finish. 16 points per game for the freshman from Australia. Eight time WCC Freshman of the Week award winner, including last week for her effort in Santa Clara's game up in San Francisco. Here's a ball that's knocked away and a steal. Maxwell thought she was fouled, no whistle though. Broncos up two with a basketball. Pritchard into the corner, Maldonado. A lot of ball handlers out there for Santa Clara. Maldonado still with it, gives it up. Here's Heel on the wing, she loses it now. Trong comes away with a basketball. Inside of three minutes to go here in the first half. Ejim up top looking for help. And now Gonzaga, Santa Clara got back on defense. Will set things up, 32 to 30 is the Broncos lead. Gonzaga's run their offense through Ejim. Another opportunity here, and Ejim, through contact, will get to the line. That'll be the first foul on Olivia Pollard. Ejim has shown tremendous improvement through the three years now. She's been with Gonzaga, went from averaging only four points per game as a freshman two seasons ago. Last year up to 10 points per game. She was the WCC sixth woman of the year. Top bench player in the conference. And has increased her production even more so now this year up to 17 points per game. And she has had a spectacular first half here tonight. With the two free throws there, Ejim now with 18. She's got 18 of Gonzaga's 32 and another Santa Clara turnover. After the Gonzaga pressure, Trong nearly lost it. Keeps possession, though, for the Zags. Game tied at 32. 2.25 to go here in the first half. This is Stokes. Gets cut off by Maldonado. Trong around the screen. Three-point attempt is off the mark. Ball into the corner and out of bounds. Will go to Santa Clara. Only two points for Kalen Trong. The outstanding senior point guard for the Zags averages 16 per game. She's been quiet thus far. Broncos able to break that pressure. Coming up on the two-minute mark here in the first half. Game tied at 32. Broncos able to shake off a slow start as Pritchard drives. Can't get it to go with a left-handed runner. Haraki nearly had the steal in the backcourt. Instead, Gonzaga will push it. Stokes all the way, and Stokes with a finish. Redshirt freshman from Southern California, Callie Stokes. And Gonzaga back ahead at 
Broncos looking for a strong finish here to this first half. They've played well, particular in this second quarter. Looking to finish it strong. Pollard gives it up now to Tess Heal. Heal with the dribble, eight to shoot. Pollard, baseline jumper, and she knocks it in. Eight points for Pollard with four rebounds and a couple of blocks. It's had a very productive first half. Here's a drive and a foul is going to be called on Santa Clara. And that'll be on Tess Heal. Only the fourth team foul on Santa Clara. It should be a out of bounds play here. The officials are going to come together, I think, to determine whether or not this is a shooting foul. It didn't look like she had started her shooting motion. And they are going to give her two shots, and Bill Carr is beside himself. So free throws coming here for Stokes. Gonzaga is an outstanding free throw shooting team. 79% from the foul line, which is by far and away number one in the conference. They're a perfect seven for seven from the line here tonight. Second shot, and that's short. So the first miss at the free throw line for the Zags. They do have the lead back though, as Tess Heal driving into the corner. Pollard, and will get an offensive foul. Callie Stokes stepped in, drew the charge. And back-to-back -back fouls on Tess Heal gives her two. With exactly one minute to go here in the first half. Bill Carr is still talking to the officials. And I think still upset about the previous call. Which had uh, put Stokes at the foul line. Well, final minute here of this first half. One point lead here for Gonzaga. Ejim puts the shoulder down, misses though. And a Santa Clara rebound. Maldonado quickly into the front court. 40 seconds left. She'll back it out now. Santa Clara down by one. Maldonado gets it back. Three point attempt rolls out. Haraki fighting for the rebound. And it'll be a tie up. Good effort there. Ashley Haraki forces the jump ball. On the alternating possession, though, it'll go back to Gonzaga. 32.2 seconds left. Gonzaga about a two-second differential between shot clock and game clock. Broncos have certainly competed hard and are going to be in a much better position at the half here tonight compared to when, the, when these two teams met a month ago up in Spokane. Santa Clara was looking at a double-digit deficit pretty much all game in that one. Ejim, some trouble with it. Over Pollard, no good. Nice defense, a Santa Clara rebound. And the shot from across half court, well short from Mariah Hudgens. And that will bring us to the half. A tight one here at the Levy Center. Santa Clara trailing, but only by one point. 35-34 is the Gonzaga lead. Coming up at the half, we'll have all the highlights, all of the first half stats. But coming up next, it's a conversation with Broncos freshman guard, Mariah Hudgens. Hudgens, who recently moved into the starting lineup, is having herself an outstanding first season with Santa Clara, averaging 10.6 rebounds per game in WCC play. We'll visit with Mariah Hudgens here at the half. That's coming up next. It's Gonzaga 35, Santa Clara 34. You're watching Broncos basketball on the WCC Network.
It's Santa Clara basketball here at the Levy Center. I'm Joe Rizzo, and joining me today is Broncos freshman Mariah Hudgens. Mariah, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, well, tell me about your freshman year, your first season playing here uh, at the college level. How has it been going for you so far? It's been going great. Honestly, a dream come true. This is something I've looked forward to since I was sixth grade. So to say that I'm finally here is quite crazy, just how fast time's going by, but um, it's been really fun. Girl, a great group of girls, great staff, great place to be. Has it been about what you expected or have there been any kind of big surprises about making the jump from high school to college? Honestly, I feel like it was as expected. I knew it was going to be tough. It wasn't, it wasn't going to be easy at all. Um, every day was going to be a new challenge. Practice wasn't going to be easy. Games were going to be challenging. So, yeah. And uh, what really has allowed you to kind of take off here this last month? Playing a little bit more, you've had a chance to start some games, but a 10 points a game here in, in conference play. It seems like you've gotten settled here these last few times. Yeah, I would say just confidence. Um, coming in, like it takes a minute to get used to the system that they run, um, just get used to the competition. So just I'm, now I'm feeling confident in what we run, what our game plans always are. Um, and I'd say just the group of girls are always surrounding me are keep, keeping me encouraged and things like that. Now you're from Colorado, a, yeah. a great high school player there. You played on some phenomenal high school team yeah. won a state championship what was that experience like? yeah it was great so my freshman year actually I lived in Atlanta so won a state title there as well played on the top top team in the nation uh, all I think almost all those girls went and played college basketball um, so it was really cool to experience that as a freshman then moving to Colorado as a sophomore um, playing with the best player in the country in my class um, alongside some other great girls who it was, it was really it was really hard it was challenging you know especially coming in as a sophomore like you got to kind of earn your place and I, I did so but um, it was fun. I would imagine yeah. that playing at such a high level in high school had to have really prepared you for, yes. for the WCC and playing here at Santa Clara. Yes definitely like playing at a high level in high school definitely made a difference, but also in the EYBL. I was I played in the EYBL since I was a freshman up to my end of the junior year. So it was definitely a playing, playing against top teams, top girls every day. So it was awesome. And what really drew you about coming out here to California, playing for Coach Carr and the, mm -hmm. uh, the West Coast Conference? Um, yeah, I mean, I knew this was a notable conference. Uh, every team was really good, um, great academics. Um, one thing for me, like all my family lives in the West Coast, so I knew that every spot we go to I'd have family there or friends there so it was really nice and I wasn't right in my parents backyard but like I'm close enough so that they, they can come um, they, they come out here quite a bit which is really nice so I, it just checked all my boxes all right and how about from uh, the, the team perspective a little bit of a slow start to conference mm -hmm. play but but over the last few weeks just seems like the team has been building and building yeah. here uh, as they go down the home stretch. yes for sure like you know preseason we built a lot of confidence you know playing against some good teams got some good wins played Stanford close things like that um, a little slow start to conference, um, but we were finally working our way back up. You know, we have a lot to prove. Like they, they voted us eighth great preseason, so we've just had that on our shoulders. You know, playing with a chip on us. So. Like that motivation. Yes. Right? Yes. All right. Well, best of luck to you down the stretch, and congrats on what's been a great freshman year so Thank far. Thank you. All right, that's Broncos freshman Mariah Hudgens. This is Santa Clara basketball.
Welcome back to the Levy Center at the half, a 35-34 lead for the Gonzaga Bulldogs over the Santa Clara Broncos. This is Bill Russell Recognition Week around the WCC, both men's and women's basketball student athletes wearing special shirts honoring the life and legacy of Bill Russell during pregame activities tonight and throughout the weekend. Russell, of course, passed away last uh, summer. The WCC and its institutions recognizing uh, Russell's achievements as a pioneer for social justice during this first week of Black History Month. Russell, of course, had the uh, incredible career at the University of San Francisco, WCC Player of the Year before he went on to become a 12-time NBA All-Star. Bill Russell, Recognition Week here around the WCC. Some of the first half highlights now here from the Levy Center. The Broncos fell behind early as uh, Gonzaga blitzed them uh, first uh, six or seven minutes. Early three-point make there from Brenna Maxwell. That was the only shot attempt from Maxwell in that first half. Zags opened up a 20 to eight lead at one point and it was really Olivia Pollard hitting a couple of threes late in that first quarter plus great defense down low that jump started Santa Clara then late in that first quarter they cut the deficit down to six at the end of one and then uh, took a couple of slim leads uh, early in that second quarter as you see Lexi Pritchard finishing there down low Broncos getting great production off the bench with uh, Pollard and uh, Pritchard Mariah Hudgens up top, got the friendly roll on her long three-point attempt. One of six made threes in that first half for Santa Clara. Both teams shot the ball very well in the opening half. Broncos at 50% overall, including six out of 10 from three-point range. Gonzaga shot it at 52%, just two out of four from a distance no surprise again these are the top two scoring teams in the conference pretty even the rest of the way in terms of rebounds and assists both teams i'm sure looking at those turnovers saying they need to cut down on that broncos turned it over 11 times remember they only average about 13 turnovers per game which is fewest in the conference Broncos, though, did force 10 Gonzaga turnovers. Individually, Olivia Pollard leading Santa Clara with eight points off the bench, five each for Heel, Haraki, and Edmondson. Edmondson, though, did pick up three fouls in that opening half. The Yvonne Ejim show on the Gonzaga side, 18 points for Ejim, 18 of the Zags, 35 in that opening half. Broncos trailing, but only by a point. Second half action is coming up next. You're watching Broncos basketball here on the WCC Network.
about to start the second half here in Santa Clara. And a good one tonight between the Broncos and the Gonzaga Bulldogs. 35-34 is the Gonzaga lead. Elsewhere around the WCC on this Thursday night. Close game up in San Francisco right now at the half. Portland has a two-point lead, 32-30. to Portland at 10-1 in conference play. Just one game behind this Gonzaga team. And down in Southern California, good start for St. Mary's, 31-18 to at the half. They've got a lead over a struggling Pepperdine team. LMU will host Pacific a little bit later on tonight. Here at the Levy Center, Broncos were down by 12 in that first quarter. Battled back, though, led by as many as three in the middle portion of the second quarter. Right now, down by one, as it'll be Broncos basketball here to start quarter number three. Of note, no Laura Edmondson on the floor for Santa Clara is Tess Heal. Nifty move and a nice finish. Opens this second half, and the Broncos back ahead. Edmondson, who picked up that third foul late in the first half, starting the second half on the bench. Tess Heal, the only other Bronco in foul trouble. She's got two. Maxwell and Burton with two fouls each on the Gonzaga side. As that shot from Little is blocked out of bounds by Mariah Hudgens. Only seven on the shot clock here with Santa Clara up by one. It'll be a Gonzaga inbounds here on the baseline. Kong, who only scored two points in that first half, will enter it in. Outside to Williams, back to Trong. Three-point attempt, rims out, but Ejim right there cleans up the miss and finishes. And that's just too easy. Ejim's got 20 points now. By far and away, the leading scorer in this game. Again, talked about it at the top of the broadcast. Big key for the Broncos on the glass. Here's Heal, finishes, and the foul. Tess Heal through contact, able to get it to go. And a chance at a three-point play. The Broncos' leading scorer. Off to a great start here in the third quarter. Buckets on back-to-back -back possessions. And that one wasn't easy. Heal's got nine. Has had six 20-plus point games this season. She may need another tonight if the Broncos are going to pull this one off. For Santa Clara player now to double figures. The Broncos up two at 39-37. Little more than a minute gone by here in the third quarter. Can the Broncos slow down Yvonne Ejim as we get a whistle and a foul called on the Broncos' Ashley Maldonado. Trying to fight through a screen. That'll be Maldonado's first. So Gonzaga inbound. 39-37 is the Santa Clara advantage. Now we get a illegal screen again called on Gonzaga. They've had several of those here tonight. First foul on Little. So the Bulldogs give it right back. Santa Clara trying to snap a 14-game losing streak to this Gonzaga program. Heel, nice entry pass to Pollard, but she's swarmed underneath. And Gonzaga comes away with the basketball. Good interior defense there from the Zags. Now we get a whistle, and Williams was out of bounds. Had a heel on the sideline. And it's Santa Clara basketball. So back-to-back -back turnovers for Gonzaga continues to be a big issue for them. Broncos able to get it across the timeline. Hudgens picks up the dribble. Santa Clara up two. Heels scored all five of the Broncos' points in this third quarter. She's got it again. Full head of steam to the basket. A little strong, though, on the miss. And then she commits the foul. Rough sequence there for Tess Heel. Made a good move to give herself a look, miss the shot, and then maybe out of some frustration, commits her third foul. Very unfortunate with the way she had started this second half. And so Heal will join Edmondson on the bench with those three fouls. Lexi Pritchard 
Back in here for Santa Clara. Two point Broncos lead. 7.50 to go in the third quarter. Trong escapes the trap and then throws it away. Broncos with a disruptive defensive effort here tonight. Gonzaga usually takes much better care of the basketball. Talked about Santa Clara, how they average the fewest number of turnovers per game in the conference. Well, Gonzaga ranks number two on that list. Wouldn't have guessed it with what we've seen tonight. Give Santa Clara credit defensively. Hiraki spinning, Hiraki finishing. What a move, Ashley Hiraki. She's got seven. Perfect three of three from the floor. And this is the Broncos' largest lead of the night. They're up by four. Early here in the third quarter, Trong all the way and off the glass for two. Broncos don't want to see Trong get going. Her twin sister hasn't played since November out due to injury. As Mariah Hudgens, that one all the way in, spins out. Ball's on the floor. Pritchard ends up with it. Finds Pollard, and Santa Clara can reset. Great effort down low there from Lexi Pritchard to save the possession here for the Broncos. Now seven to shoot. Haraki to a cutting. Mariah Hudgens. Hudgens plus the foul. And it all started with the effort from Pritchard to keep it going underneath. Down on her knees with the basketball. She found a teammate. The Broncos able to reset. And Mariah Hudgens converts. Hudgens, five points, three rebounds. We heard from her at the half. What a great freshman season she's had here with Santa Clara. Completes the three-point play. And the Broncos now up five. 44-39. 6.40 left here in the third quarter. Both teams still shooting the ball very well. Santa Clara at 53%. Gonzaga at 52%. Broncos with a trap in the corner. Williams gets rid of it. Burton's back in. Now up top to Trong. Eight on the shot clock. Trong, some contact and a foul. Broncos, I think, could do without that one. 30 feet from the basket. And Olivia Pollard called for her second and the third team foul already on Santa Clara. That could be notable. Broncos want to do what they can to avoid putting Gonzaga at the free throw line. One of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. Trong with a dribble. Up top to Burton. This is Callie Stokes back in. Broncos continue to trap outside. Trong with it. Finds Ejim, Ejim with a jumper, off the back rim, off the top of the backboard, with a rebound controlled by Williams. Another opportunity here for the Zags. Broncos are up five, nearing the halfway point here of the third quarter. Trong hesitates to the basket, comes away with the ball. Ejim lost it underneath, throws it back out near center court and throws it away, and a real disjointed possession there from Gonzaga. And Santa Clara's defense tightening up. Now we'll see some substitutions. Maxwell returning for the Zags. And Laura Edmondson back in for the first time here in this third quarter. We'll play with those three fouls. Broncos up five. This is their largest lead of the night. This is Pritchard in front of the Broncos bench. Puts it on the floor. Edmondson now has it. Finds Maldonado. Maldonado with the dribble. Now to Pritchard. We get a whistle away from the ball. And a foul is going to be called on Lara Edmondson. Wow. Trying to establish position down low. Gets called for her fourth foul. She had just checked back into the game. And just seconds later gets called for her fourth. Bill Carr unhappy with that whistle. So a very significant call, and Edmondson will likely sit for quite a while now with those four fouls. Here's Ejim blocked by Pollard. Got a hand on another shot. That one from Burton. Two blocks from Olivia Pollard on that possession, having arguably her best defensive game of the season and picking a great time for it. 
Past the halfway point now, the third quarter is still a five-point lead for Santa Clara. Pollard down low, nice look to Hudgens, can't finish. And a fight for the rebound, and we get a jump ball. And on the possession arrow, it'll go to Gonzaga. It'll bring us to our first time out here of the second half. 4.43 to go in the third. Broncos up five. This is Santa Clara basketball on the WCC Network. Game has become more of a defensive battle here so far in this third quarter. Haven't had any points in over two minutes. Santa Clara with their largest lead right now out in front 44-39. Foul trouble though is mounting for the Broncos. Laura Edmondson on the bench with four fouls. Tess Heal is sitting with three. Gonzaga's Brenna Maxwell is on the floor right now with three fouls. After the tie-up, it'll be Gonzaga basketball. The Zags with their perfect 11-0 conference record. Certainly getting tested here tonight by Santa Clara. Something that head coach Bill Carr talked about during shoot-around today, wanting to make Gonzaga feel a little pressure here tonight. It's come easy for the Zags much of the conference season as Mariah Hudgens with a steal pulls up and hits. The mid-range jumper there, Mariah Hudgens. She's having a big third quarter. The steal and the bucket. And the Broncos now up by seven. Stokes swings it to Trong. Up top to Ejim. Ejim has been the star player for Gonzaga tonight. And she draws another foul. Broncos collapsed down low there against Ejim, but a little too aggressive. And for Hudgens, it'll be her first. More free throws for Ejim, who's a perfect six of six from the line tonight. That's also the fifth team foul on Santa Clara, so it'll be free throws the rest of this third quarter for Gonzaga. Ejim's first free throw is no good. Ejim, who's from Calgary, played on uh, various Canadian national teams growing up. And now her third year in this Gonzaga program. It's one out of two at the line. Gonzaga eight out of ten shooting free throws tonight, which is pretty much right at their season average. The best free throw shooting team in the conference. Six-point lead here for Santa Clara, 345 to go in the third quarter. And seeing a zone defense now from Gonzaga. Different look defensively here from the Bulldogs. Haraki finds herself open, hits the three. That might get Gonzaga right out of their zone. First made three of the second half for the Broncos, who are now up by nine, 49-40. And this now becomes their largest lead. Here's Ejim down low. Pollard cuts her off. Good defense. Putting it on the floor. Stokes and an offensive foul. She pushes off. Now Ashley Haraki on one end hits the three on the other end draws the charge 
And another turnover created by Santa Clara's defense. It has become a theme here tonight. Really starting late in that first quarter as the Broncos erase that early 12-point deficit. Broncos get it across the timeline. Here's Pollard in the corner, all the way across court to Pritchard. Still 12 to shoot. Broncos up nine with the ball. Maldonado on the wing. Here's Pritchard. Pritchard driving all the way with the finish. A bucket for Lexi Pritchard. It's an 11-point Santa Clara lead, and Gonzaga calls time. Broncos have heated up here in the third quarter. 51-40, they're ahead, 2.44 to go. It's a full timeout. We'll take a break here on the WCC Network. Back here at the Levy Center as we get another look at that last bucket before the timeout. Lexi Pritchard, Santa Clara's made their last three shots. They're up 51 to 40 here late in the third quarter. And it was Bill Carr pregame talking about how he wanted to make this Gonzaga team feel a little pressure here. And I'm sure the Zags are feeling it now down by 11. Forced to call the timeout. We'll see what they do here with possession. Two and a half to go in the third, and an excellent pass, excellent cut, and Michaela Williams with the layup. Well, well designed there by Gonzaga as they get the bucket. Broncos lead is nine. Gonzaga had gone over four minutes without a field goal prior to that basket. Here's Pritchard. Pritchard again driving, this time gets cut off. Maldonado three-point attempt misses everything. And a rebound to the Zags. And Zaga will look to push it. Trong down low. Ejim posting up on Pollard. Another block. Olivia Pollard getting a hand on it. And now we get a whistle and a foul is going to be called on Gonzaga. Ejim pushed off as she dove for that loose ball. More great defense from Olivia Pollard. Pollard picking up her fourth block of the night. That is the fifth team foul on Gonzaga. So the question is, they are over the limit now as to whether or not free throws are coming here for Santa Clara, whether or not the Broncos had possession of that loose ball, in which case there would be free throws but they are going to call it a player control foul instead. And thus, it'll be an inbounds for the Broncos. Oh, Bill Carr didn't win that argument. Now we get a kickball in the backcourt. Certainly can expect Gonzaga to ratchet up the pressure here. Final two minutes of this third quarter, a 51 to 42 Santa Clara lead. And pressure in the backcourt here. 
Hudgens gets it across to Pritchard. Pritchard escapes the double team. Now into the corner, three-point shot is no good from Pollard, but a long offensive rebound. The Broncos keep possession. And this group that has logged heavy minutes here in the third quarter with Edmondson and Heal both sitting with foul trouble. Haraki, three to shoot, two to shoot. Haraki's got to go. Off balance shot, misses everything as the shot clock was expiring. And wait a minute, we get a whistle and they're going to call a foul. Wow, how about that? The whistle for a Gonzaga foul. And the Gonzaga bench in disbelief. And with Haraki's feet behind the line, it'll be three free throws coming up. What a break for Santa Clara. As the first free throw, good. That shot really had no chance of going in. And the Broncos instead get three free throws out of it. Third foul on Ejim. Eleven points now for Ashley Haraki as she now leads Santa Clara in scoring tonight and makes all three free throws. That's big. Broncos are up 12 now. 70 seconds left in this third quarter. Ejim to Maxwell. Misses short on the shot. Offensive rebound though, Williams back to Maxwell, hits the three, and that one hurts for the Broncos. Maxwell's got that quick release. Broncos couldn't control the offensive rebound. And that's one of the last things Santa Clara wants to see here going into the fourth quarter is Maxwell getting hot from three-point range. Averages 15 points per game. Nine-point Broncos lead, final minute of the third quarter. Pollard. Now to Pritchard, driving baseline, Hudgens, corner three, rims out, and a rebound to Gonzaga. Bulldogs will push. They can hold it for the final shot here of the quarter, and Trong now looks like she'll do that. 54 to 45 is the Broncos' advantage. Ten seconds left, Trong hands off to Maxwell. Guarded closely by Haraki. Here's Williams. Five seconds. Williams now to Maxwell. Maxwell stepping inside the line. Drives. Misses short. And a Broncos rebound will take us to the end of the third quarter. Broncos outscored Gonzaga 20 to 10 in that third quarter. They're up by nine. Fourth quarter is coming up here from the Levy Center on the WCC Network.
Back here at the Levy Center, I'm Joe Rizzo getting the fourth quarter started. Broncos have a nine-point lead, 54-45. to Tess Seal is back on the floor here for Santa Clara to start the fourth quarter. Sad much of the third with those three fouls. Laura Edmondson still on the bench with her four fouls as Pritchard drives and finishes. Lexi Pritchard doing some great work tonight. Eight points off the bench on four of six shooting. Back to a double-digit Santa Clara lead, up 11. Here's a deep three, and Trong buries it. So it was Maxwell hitting a three. That final minute of the third, and now Trong here early in the fourth. Two best outside shooters on this Gonzaga team. Pollard trying to answer, and she does. Olivia Pollard for three. Her third made three tonight. Broncos are eight for 16 from deep. Back up by 11. Here's Williams. Williams step back, shakes the defender, misses. Ball on the floor, Stokes gets it while sitting on the uh, ground. Hudgens now ends up with a basketball and we get a whistle and a foul is gonna be called. And it's going to be on Gonzaga. And if it's Ejim, it's her fourth. And it is. Wow. And that's a massive call and a loose ball situation with Ejim, who's been the best player on the floor for Gonzaga tonight. 21 points. Called for her fourth foul. Maya Hudgens ended up with that basketball on the deck and drew the foul. Heel, trouble getting it across the timeline. Able to muscle it over to Pritchard. Broncos are going to have to be tough here in the fourth quarter. They're going to get Gonzaga's best effort. Here's a reverse layup. Hudgens ran it drops in. A friendly roll for Mariah Hudgens. And the reverse lay in. And the Broncos now up 13, their largest advantage. And a travel. Williams going a little too quickly. And the 17th Gonzaga turnover tonight. 8.08 to go in regulation. And a 61 to 48 Santa Clara lead. Iraqi across the line here to heal. Pritchard on the wing. Here's Hudgens. She'll dribble it back out. Now to an open Pollard. Three point shot. Good look. Misses. Rebound tapped. Controlled by Little. Boy, if that one would have gone down. Broncos with those eight made threes tonight, right at their average. Good interior passing now, and a finish for Callie Stokes. Great pass from Little. Gets Gonzaga back to within 11. Seven and a half remaining. Broncos across the timeline. Here's Haraki dribbling in traffic. Now up top, heel. She's open. Tess Heel for three. So the Broncos wasn't always pretty there, breaking the pressure. Tess Heel, the eight time WCC freshman of the week, hits the three and now commits the foul. Wow. And that's certainly one the Broncos could have done without. 30 feet from the hoop and the fourth foul on Tess Heel. So she hits the three but is heading back to the bench with those four fouls. Ashley Maldonado replaces her. Laura Edmondson's also back in. So Edmondson will play with four. Ejim returns for Gonzaga playing with four fouls. Foul trouble on both sides with some key players here. Gonzaga possession, Williams down low and the fifth block from Olivia Pollard as she knocks that one out of bounds. Pollard, five blocks plus 11 points. I think really this is her best all around game of the season here for Santa Clara. An inbounds for Gonzaga. Williams is open, deep three, rims out, rebound tapped and controlled by the Zags. Stokes gets it to Trong. Her corner three is good. So that's twice now. In the last few minutes that Gonzaga's hit a three off of an offensive rebound. That's tough for the Broncos. The lead now 11. 
Pritchard in the corner, six and a half to go in this game. Here's Maldonado, she'll back it out, still 12 to shoot. She'll, she'll get a high screen from Edmondson. Maldonado still with it, four on the shot clock, dribbling, misses with the left hand, gets her own rebound though. Shot clock resets to 20. And the Broncos can set something back up. Nice effort there from Ashley Maldonado to get her own miss. Now Pollard, Pollard, three-point attempt, back rim, and another rebound. Lexi Pritchard has it. And a third opportunity now for the Broncos on this possession. Clock rolling inside of six minutes. Maldonado to Haraki. Entry pass to Edmondson. Great look and a finish. What a pass there, Ashley Haraki. And Edmondson with her first point since very early in the first quarter. Broncos up 13, 66-53. Trying to hand Gonzaga their first conference loss of the season. Here's Ejim as she's falling down, able to find Stokes. And Callie Stokes with another bucket. She's got nine off the bench. Back to an 11-point Santa Clara advantage. Pollard will kick it back out, coming up on the halfway point here of the fourth quarter. With the dribble, Maldonado goes around the Edmondson screen. Up top now to Haraki, eight to shoot. Haraki driving, gets cut off, trying to find Edmondson, the bounce pass though. And it's on the floor and we're gonna get a foul. And if it's Edmondson, she's done. And it is a loose ball situation. And Laura Edmondson with 4.54 to go in this game has just fouled out. So a big call in this one. Do the Broncos have enough? They're leading by 11. Crunch time ahead here at the Levy Center. You're watching the WCC Network. Back here at the Levy Center, a bucket there from Laura Edmondson. Unfortunately, it'll be her final points of the night. Edmondson was whistled for her fifth foul on that last play before the timeout. So she has fouled out with only seven points. Edmondson played only seven minutes tonight. And she was effective in those seven minutes, three of three shooting, but just could not stay out of foul trouble this evening. Tess Heal with four fouls is still on the bench. A lot has fallen on Olivia Pollard tonight, and she has been up to the challenge, in particular defensively. Broncos are up 11. Now late in this game, 4.40 to go. Ejim all the way, and Ejim gets it to go, plus a foul. And that one will be on Pollard, and that was a determined take to the hoop there from Ejim. Was not going to be denied just the second foul on Pollard third team foul on the Broncos and now Ejim who's got 23 points try and complete the three-point play and she does 24 points five rebounds for Ejim although she's playing with four fouls 
the Broncos can get her out of the game. Boy, that would be massive. Here's some backcourt pressure. Haraki's got to get it across, and she just, just does with one second to spare. An eight-point Santa Clara lead here. Maldonado with the dribble outside. Gets cut off. Now Pritchard. Four to shoot. Late clock situation. Pritchard to Maldonado. She's got to go. Contested jumper is good. Well, they're going to take a look. See if Ashley Maldonado beat the shot clock there. I don't know. If it goes, the lead's up to 10. If not, it's back to 8. And it'll be Gonzaga basketball. Broncos used all 30 seconds there on that possession. The Broncos, I mean, they barely got it across the timeline. They're going to, again, get Gonzaga's best shot when it comes to backcourt pressure here. You'd expect here down the stretch. Bulldogs trying to do what they can to erase the deficit. This will obviously be a, a massive call at this stage in the game. Only 4.05 to go in regulation. Broncos have won three out of their last four, trying to continue their move up the standings. So get another look at the shot. Nope, they're going to wave it off, and I think that's a good call. Just uh, didn't get it off quite in time. That game up in San Francisco tonight continues to be a tight one. They're, they're in the final minute. Portland, a two-point lead right now on San Francisco, 66-64. That'd be a massive road win there for the Pilots, who are 10-1. and One, one game behind, 11-0 Gonzaga. Here's a three from Maxwell. She's heating up late, and Gonzaga has pulled within five. Broncos were at one point up 14. Zags right now are on an 8-0 run. Applying some backcourt pressure. Pritchard just gets it across. Now Pollard, corner three is good. Another big shot from Olivia Pollard. Here's Strong trying to answer. She comes up short, ball in the corner, and Gonzaga saves it. What an effort there from Maxwell. Throwing it back behind her back to Trong. Saves the possession here for the Zags. Now Maxwell up top. Thought about the deep three. Puts it on the floor. Four to shoot. Here's Williams. Ejim, two on the shot clock. She's got to go, and she hits. Long two there from Ejim, who's got 26. Three minutes remaining. Broncos leading 69-63. Heel gets it across the timeline. Now Pritchard. Pritchard cut off, back to Heel. Heel playing with four fouls. Ejim playing with four. Edmondson has already fouled out for Santa Clara. Heel looking for help. Up top to Hudgens, and she's fouled. Tron going for that ball, crashes into Mariah Hudgens. Just the second team foul on Gonzaga. So they've got fouls to give with 2.38 to go. So it'll be an inbounds here for the Broncos. Up by six. 69-63. Broncos are now 10 out of 20 from three-point range. Including four made threes from Olivia Pollard. Santa Clara is going to call a 30-second timeout here. With 2.38 to go. They've got possession. And a six-point lead. We take a look at some of the highlights here of this fourth quarter. Edmondson hitting that bucket before she fouled out. Olivia Pollard has had a couple of corner threes in this fourth quarter. And then it was Ejim on the last possession to get Gonzaga back within six. Again, the last time Santa Clara beat Gonzaga was March of 2016 in the WCC tournament. Seven years ago. Gonzaga has won the last 14 head-to-head -head meetings, including earlier this season when they beat the Broncos by 17 up in Spokane. A much different type of game here tonight. We'll see what the Broncos do out of the timeout. Heel with the basketball out near center court. Two and a half remaining. Broncos up six. Heel 
Driving, picks up the dribble, and she travels. Lifted that pivot foot. And it's a Santa Clara turnover. So back to Gonzaga, the 16th Santa Clara turnover tonight. Gonzaga has turned it over 17 times. Ejim has it outside, finds Trong. Back to Ejim. She'll drive baseline. Ejim puts it up, misses, and the ball knocked out of bounds to Santa Clara. Pollard got knocked to the floor, no foul. But it did clearly go off a Gonzaga player. So Santa Clara basketball with 2.08 to go. Broncos can take some time, but they still need to get some good shots off here. Work to be done offensively up by six. Inside of two minutes left. Here's Heal. Looking for a help. Over to Haraki in the corner. Haraki will dribble it out. Eight to shoot. Haraki looking for Pollard. Her pass, though, deflected by Ejim and stolen. In transition, this is Stokes. Stokes will dribble it back out. Back to Trong. Deep three is good. Huge shot for Kaylin Trong. Cuts the Santa Clara lead in a half. Now just a three-point Broncos advantage and a timeout call by Gonzaga. So the Bulldogs get the steal, and they turn it into a three-point bucket on the other end. And Gonzaga now on a 13-3 run over about the last four minutes. Broncos had a late double-digit lead, and now it's just a one-possession game with 95 seconds left. Gonzaga still with two timeouts remaining. Broncos have three, so no issues there on either side. Both teams still have fouls to give. And Gonzaga right now owns the possession arrow. Broncos will send Haraki, Heal, Pritchard, Hudgens, and Pollard onto the floor here. And some full court pressure from Gonzaga. Heal, or rather Haraki, the long baseball pass all the way across center court to Pollard. A little unorthodox, but it works for Santa Clara. And now they can set up their offense. Here's Heal, Heal driving. Heal dishes to Haraki, active hands here from the Zags. Back to Heal, still 10 to shoot. 1.15 to go in the game. Heal with the dribble, looking for an opening. Heal driving, Heal gets in, shot is blocked, and it's out of bounds. Broncos will keep it but with only two seconds on the shot clock. It's a three-point Santa Clara lead. Broncos will have to go quickly here. Heel to inbound, trying to find Pollard. That's knocked out of bounds with now just one on the shot clock. So it'll much, pretty much be a catch and shoot here. Broncos want to get Ashley Maldonado back into the game. And she will come in for Tess Heel. So it'll be Maldonado that'll enter it in. One second to shoot here. Maldonado looking for help. Out to Hudgens. She goes, and uh, they're going to call it a shot clock violation. Didn't get it off in time. So back to Gonzaga with 104 remaining. And the Broncos get a defensive stop here. Heel comes back in now for Maldonado. We'll see where Gonzaga goes offensively. Bulldogs were down 14 at one point early in this fourth quarter. Trying to come all the way back. One minute to go. Here's Williams. Williams puts it on the floor. Back to Ejim. Nearly traveled. Now Williams. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Ejim. Ejim drives. Stokes baseline jumper. Rims out. Fight for the rebound. Ejim's got it. Shot was blocked. Ejim gets it in the corner. Looking for a teammate. And we get a whistle and a foul here called on Gonzaga. As Haraki got clotheslined there going for that basketball. And got fouled by Trong. It is just the third Gonzaga team foul. So it'll... Via Santa Clara inbounds. Ashley Haraki fighting for that loose ball and able to draw the foul. So a defensive stand for the Broncos, and they'll call a timeout now to advance the ball with 38.4 seconds. And Santa Clara leading 69-66. 
By the way, Portland and San Francisco, they're headed to overtime on the hilltop, tied at 68. Santa Clara would love to avoid overtime here tonight. Ashley Maldonado is going to come back in here for Santa Clara, give the Broncos another ball handler. Be curious to see how Gonzaga plays this for the full 30 seconds on the shot clock. But just 38.4 on the game clock. Gonzaga with only those three team fouls. So they've got another foul to give. Both teams now have two timeouts left. With Gonzaga holding on to the possession arrow. If the Broncos can get it, this would no doubt be their biggest win of the season. It'd be one of their biggest wins over the last several years. But they're not there yet. Broncos who have suffered all kinds of heartbreak at home in conference play. Think about the Pepperdine game where the Waves hit a bucket with less than a second to go to win by one. Two weeks later, here at home against San Francisco, the Dons hit a bucket with a second left to force overtime, and they would eventually win. The Broncos want to avoid a similar fate here tonight. After the timeout, they'll have an inbounds in front of their bench. It'll be Haraki to enter it in. 69-66 is the Santa Clara lead. Broncos up three. Haraki gets it to heel. And immediately the foul is given. So Williams called for the foul. That's the fourth team foul. With 36.2 seconds left. So does Gonzaga give another foul here? Or do they play it out? Broncos are going to put a couple of players well into the backcourt. You can throw it into the backcourt here, and they will. Hudgens, she's got it, and she's immediately fouled. So Gonzaga will try and extend the game here with 34.1 left. And two free throws coming up now for Mariah Hudgens. Gonzaga's over the limit. Hudgens, one for one at the free throw line tonight. A 75% foul shooter for the year. Santa Clara has gone... Over three minutes without scoring, but still with the lead. Hudgens first free throw, perfect. Makes it a two possession game. Confident stroke there at the line from the freshman. Second free throw, perfect. No problem whatsoever there from Mariah Hudgens and now Gonzaga will call one of their two remaining timeouts. To advance the ball here with 34.1 left. And a 71-66 Santa Clara lead. No doubt avoiding turnovers here down the stretch will be very important for the Broncos. Given Gonzaga's pressure defense, Broncos have been shooting free throws very well tonight. Nine out of ten as a team. One of the better free throw shooting teams in the WCC. Do they have enough here to hang on? against the first place team in the conference. Just one timeout remaining for Gonzaga. And we'll see where the Zags go here. Gonzaga has had, a, has had a good night from deep. They're seven out of 12 shooting threes, including four for six here in the fourth quarter. It's gotten them back into it. Broncos up five. Maxwell the inbounds to Ejim. Gets it back to Maxwell. Her three-point shot is good. And the officials quickly stop it. They want to adjust the clock. Boy, that happened fast. And the quick release from Maxwell to hit another three. And it gets it back down to a two-point game with 30.6 seconds. That took only four seconds there for Gonzaga. And the Broncos now will use another timeout to advance the ball here. And again, just so important to get the ball inbounds. Gonzaga eventually is going to have to foul here. And then the Broncos will have to step to the line and hit some free throws. 
Maldonado's back in now for Santa Clara. It'll be Maldonado, Hudgens, Pollard, Heel, and Haraki. Haraki will be the inbounder with 30.6 seconds left. Santa Clara still with one timeout remaining. Broncos are up by two. Haraki gets it into Maldonado, and she's immediately fouled by Trong. 29.4 left. That took only one second. Fourth foul on Trong. So Trong and Ejim now with four each for Gonzaga. Maldonado needs both here to make it a two-possession game again. First free throw. Got it. 76% at the line for Ashley Maldonado here this season. Is to make it a two-possession game? She does. And Gonzaga is going to use their final timeout now with Santa Clara up by four. 29.4 seconds left. This will be a full timeout, and it will be the last time that Gonzaga, at least in regulation, will have the ability to advance the ball into the front court. It was just three weeks ago that Santa Clara was sitting at 1-5 and five in conference play, obviously with some heartbreak in there. They certainly felt like they were much better than that 1-5 record. They've certainly proven that over these last few weeks, notably with that road sweep over San Diego and BYU, getting the program's first ever win in Provo two weeks ago. This one would be even bigger if they can get it done. With these 29 seconds left, Santa Clara trying to hand Gonzaga their first conference loss. With the Zags at 11-0, they've won 14 straight overall. Gonzaga hasn't lost a game since December the 4th when they were beaten by second-ranked Stanford. And Gonzaga's out of timeouts. The Zags do own the possession arrow. Zaga will inbound the ball. They trail by four. Williams to enter it in to Ejim. Ejim holding onto the basketball. Now Maxwell. Maxwell, three is blocked. Haraki and Pollard were there, and now a foul called. So the Broncos collapsed defensively on Maxwell, just would not give her another look. The shot was blocked. And now a foul will put Santa Clara at the line. And you see Gonzaga patient setting up the play. It was Haraki there that got a hand in on that one. The officials are going to go to the monitor here. There's 21.2 seconds left. I don't know maybe if they're looking at something excessive or flagrant on that last foul call. The foul was on Williams, her third personal. And it'll be Tess Hill going to the free throw line. And if they are looking to see if it is a flagrant, obviously it's a huge difference. Two shots or two shots in the ball. As we get a look at that entire last possession, you see the defense there from Ashley Haraki getting a hand in. Pollard finding heel. And then there's the foul given by Williams with heel falling to the ground. And we'll get a ruling here momentarily as the officials, all three of them, will conference. 21.2 seconds left. Either way, there's free throws coming here for Santa Clara. Trying to extend their lead, which right now is at four points. Bill Carr has never beaten Santa, or never beaten Gonzaga. His seven years as a head coach here. Could this be win number one? And it looks like they will just be calling it a common foul. So it'll just be two free throws here for Tess Heal. Remember, Gonzaga's out of timeouts. 
So they'll have to go the entire length of the court here after these free throws. Heal an 83% foul shooter this season, and the first one rolls in. Tess Heal has battled foul trouble tonight, has still found a way to chip in 14 points, matching Olivia Pollard for the team lead. Second free throw off the back rim, so it's a five-point margin. Gonzaga with the basketball, 15 seconds left. Trong's got it. Trong, she'll hoist from three, and she hits. With 11.2 left, makes it a two-point game. Officials, I think, are going to adjust the clock here slightly. They're going to put two-tenths of a second back. Broncos have one timeout left, and they're going to use it here. It's a 32nd timeout. So Gonzaga, they're not going to go away. Broncos are going to have to get it in and hit more free throws. It's a one-possession game again. It's 74-72. And now both teams are out of timeouts. Bill Carr will draw something up here. Try and get the ball inbounds. Santa Clara is 12 out of 14 from the free throw line tonight, 86%. Santa Clara has led this entire fourth quarter. They've been ahead by as much as 14 early in the quarter. Haraki is going to inbounds here with 11.4 seconds left. And Santa Clara up by two. We've got players coming together all bunched up as the Broncos get ready to execute their inbounds play. No timeouts left. Here we go. Haraki to enter it in. Gets it into Maldonado and she's fouled. And uh, that's going to be number five on Trong. She's done. So Gonzaga's point guard will call it a night with 10.6 seconds left. Fouls out with 16 points. 14 of them came in the second half. It'll be free throws for Ashley Maldonado. She'll need them both to make it a two possession game. Maldonado's three out of four at the free throw line tonight and a 76% foul shooter this season. I think there's a issue right now in terms of how many fouls are on Kalen Trong. Gonzaga's trying to say that there's only four. And what this, at the very least, is done is basically created a a timeout here for Gonzaga to draw something up. They had it right at the scorer's table. It's number five. So Trong fouls out, and now Ashley Maldonado to shoot the two free throws with 10.6 seconds left. First shot, no good. And now this one becomes crucial. If she makes it, the Broncos can foul up three. Second free throw, good. So Santa Clara up three, 75-72. Pritchard will now come in from Maldonado. And we'll see if the Broncos do indeed foul up three. Normally something that they do try and do in these types of situations. The inbounds now to Williams. Williams has it across the timeline, and there is the foul. Perfectly executed there by Lexi Pritchard. Williams getting it across center court and then fouled. Just the fourth team foul on Santa Clara, so they'll have to do it one more time. They certainly don't want Maxwell to get a look here. She's going to inbounds it. Gets it into Ejim. Ejim has it back to Maxwell. Shot is blocked by Ashley Haraki. Santa Clara comes away with a loose ball and a foul with 1.8 seconds. So Gonzaga got the ball in the hands of Maxwell, their top three-point shooter. 
And Ashley Haraki blocked the shot. Tess Heal came away with a loose ball and she was immediately fouled. And now one more free throw should just about do it. Heal two out of three at the free throw line tonight. First shot, good. And the Broncos now up four. On the verge of pulling it off here tonight against the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Second free throw is good. 77-72 Santa Clara. Gonzaga will inbound it and that'll do it. The Broncos have won for the first time in seven years. Santa Clara has beaten Gonzaga. They hand the Bulldogs their first conference loss of the season. And the win of the year to date for the Santa Clara Broncos. What an effort here tonight at the Levy Center as they have come away with a 77-72 victory. The Broncos led basically the entire second half. And they had to hold on there at the, the very end. Gonzaga got it down to a two-point deficit on a few occasions, but they were unable to come all the way back. The Broncos were able to execute down the stretch, and they get a remarkable win here tonight against the first-place team, 77-72 was the final. Stay tuned. We're going to have a visit from Broncos head coach Bill Carr here momentarily as the coach will... Join me here courtside. We'll take a quick break. Come back with our post-game show here from the Levy Center. Broncos win at 77-72. You're watching the WCC Network. All right, back here at the Levy Center after a Santa Clara win here tonight over the Gonzaga Bulldogs, 77-72. The Broncos and Gonzaga, their first conference loss of the season. Joe Rizzo now joined courtside by Santa Clara head coach Bill Carr. And uh, what a game tonight. Uh, Santa Clara's first win over Gonzaga in seven years. How do they get it done here this evening, coach? Well... Uh, a little bit of toughness, some timely shooting. I thought we guarded at times okay. Fourth quarter, they got loose on the threes that allowed them to get back. But, you know, a good team. I mean, what are they, 17th, 18th, 19th in the country? Of course they're going to come back. Um, and you just hope you have enough down the stretch, and we did. Fell behind early, and this was a 20-8 to eight deficit. You're down 12, and it was starting to feel a little bit like the first meeting where you yep. fell behind in the first quarter. What was different this time that your team was able to battle back? Here, here's the difference. Uh, same thing happened at BYU. BYU jumped out on us, and we still had that look in our eye like we were okay. Okay, that, all right, two jumped out, and, and then we made some shots, and all of a sudden we were ahead, you know, and it was one point in, uh, game at half, and, 
again, very similar to that BYU game. And then we extended the lead. Uh, and then we got a little, I, I don't know. They made some shots. They got really good players. And they made some shots. And and uh, then we held uh, held them off. And uh, what a great win. I'm, I'm really proud of them. Let's talk about some of the individuals uh, tonight. You know, Lara Edmondson's battling foul trouble, so a lot fell on Olivia Pollard tonight. And we know what she can do offensively, and she hit some huge shots, in particular in the fourth quarter. But how about her effort defensively? She blocked five shots tonight, logged 36 minutes. What yeah. can you say about her effort shutting down really one of the best post players in the conference? Well, yeah, maybe the best. Um, I, I thought Laura did as, as much as she could do in there. Uh, you know, maybe some untimely fouls and, you know, what have you. But, you know, Laura's always going to battle. And we, we absolutely need her all the time. And, and Liv stepped in and, and put up some resistance on, on Ejim. And, you know, the block shots, the six rebounds. Um, but what a great team win. And, look, we had double digits from four people. Two others had seven. One had eight. Good balance. Um, fun team win. Um, and, and a much needed win, quite frankly, um, because we had some momentum. We dropped one uh, up at USF last week, and we needed a win. But they practiced with purpose this week and uh, and had a look about them today in, in shoot around and, and uh, uh, prior to the game. I know you were telling uh, me during the shoot around today that you wanted to make Gonzaga feel a little pressure yeah. here. You know, really push them in the second half. That that clearly happened. Like you said, they'll they'll make a run. Yeah. They did, and then you obviously had an answer with your group there in the final minutes with closing out a win, it, it, kind of game ending that I don't know if it happens a month ago with this team, and it happened yeah, maybe tonight. Not, maybe not. It, we we made some plays late that we needed to make, and and hopefully we learn from prior to Christmas and mm -hmm. and uh, in December. Uh, but yeah, we, our our thing was. And has been for every opponent. They need to feel you, mm -hmm. right? And I think, I think GU felt us tonight. You know, there was a let up, so obviously from both teams. But I think they knew they were in a game, even though they got out to a lead. I think they knew they were in a game mm -hmm. right away, and certainly by halftime. All right. Well, what does this win do do for your program? I mean, you beat a ranked team for the first time since 2015, and you continue to climb up, climb up the standings as you put yourself in a, a better position in the conference right now. Yeah, we're just trying to collect wins, right, to, to get a better spot in the conference tournament. And this one's big, right? Not a lot of people are going to beat them, right? So we, we jumped up on, on some people. And, you know, the thing about sports is we get to enjoy this for about 12 hours. Right, and a really good Portland team rolls in here on Saturday, and you know we had this two weeks ago. We won at San Diego, and we turned around and and beat a good BYU team on the road. So we have experience of bouncing back. It's going to test all of us to be ready to play on Saturday. Yeah, you go from 11 and 0 Gonzaga to 10 and 1 Portland. Did all they right. win tonight? Uh, they were in overtime last we saw. Yeah. So okay. they're uh, right now in overtime with San Francisco. All so, right. uh, Coach, congratulations on a, a great win here this evening, and we'll see you on Saturday. I'll be here. Thanks. All right. That's Santa Clara head coach Bill Carr after this 77-72 Broncos win over the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Again, Santa Clara's first win as a program over Gonzaga since March of 2016. Seven years ago, snapped a 14-game losing streak to the Zags. Santa Clara's first win against a ranked opponent since beating Stanford in 2015. Uh, so uh, a notable a notable win uh, here for uh, Bill Carr and his program. The Broncos improved to 5-6 and six in conference play and 14-10 and 10 overall. Let's take a look at some of the highlights now uh, from this uh, monumental uh, Broncos win here over Gonzaga. And as, as the coach mentioned, I mean, things didn't start off well. Broncos were down 20-8 to eight early as Gonzaga. They were getting things going inside and out. The Broncos started to force some turnovers. Mariah Hudgens a big steal there and then finishing in the transition. Broncos really took control of the game with that third quarter. They outscored Gonzaga 20 to 10 in quarter number three. The lead actually jumped as high as 14 early in the fourth. And then, well, Gonzaga, they do what they do. They go on a run. They hit some tough shots. They eventually got it down to a one possession game on a few different occasions in that final minute, minute and a half. But Santa Clara had enough. 
avoided the turnovers, came up with some big defensive plays. Ashley Haraki had a couple of huge blocks late, including on that potential game tying three from Maxwell in the closing seconds and in the end Santa Clara hangs on for a 77 72 victory taking a look now at some of the game stats here this evening the Broncos shot the ball very well all night 53 percent including 10 of 20 from a three-point range Gonzaga shot it pretty well uh, themselves 47 percent and uh, 9 of 16 uh, from three-point range. We mentioned how these are the, the top two scoring teams in the conference. They both shoot the ball incredibly well, and it was uh, as advertised here tonight. Broncos were minus six in the rebounding margin, but they held their own against one of the top rebounding teams in the conference. Uh, both the uh, squads also finished with 18 turnovers. Broncos had four players in double figures. Tess Heal once again leads the way, even though she battled some foul trouble throughout that second half. 16 points for Heal, including some big free throws uh, down the stretch. Olivia Pollard had 14 off the bench, four out of nine from three point range. Also had those five blocks. 13 for Ashley Haraki with two blocks, both coming late. And 12 points for the freshman Mariah Hudgens. Eight for Pritchard, seven each for Maldonado and Edmondson balanced scoring for the Santa Clara Broncos here this evening. For Gonzaga, Yvonne Ejim leads the way in a losing effort as she finishes with 26. Gonzaga's winning streak snapped at 14 games, their first loss since they were beaten by Stanford almost two months ago. Uh, back on December the 4th. Broncos continue to climb up the standings. They're now 5-6 and six in conference play. They've won four out of their last five overall, 14-10 and 10 overall. And up next, well, they beat the first-place team in the conference. Now they get ready uh, to play the second-place team. The Portland Pilots uh, will be in town here on Saturday afternoon. And as we check the, uh, the scoreboard, Portland did pull that one out in overtime, uh, a game that has just gone final in San Francisco 83 to 80 so that actually moves Portland into a first place tie uh, Portland and Gonzaga now both at 11 and 1 so can uh, the Broncos do it again can they beat another uh, great team here in this conference we'll see on Saturday afternoon it'll be a two o'clock tip-off and we hope you'll join us then Santa Clara and Portland here on the WCC Network. This telecast was granted by Santa Clara University and the West Coast Conference. Any use and rebroadcast requires the express written consent of Santa Clara and the WCC. For the entire BAOSN broadcast team, I'm Joe Rizzo, thanking you for watching. Broncos win it. They beat Gonzaga 77-72. to Good night from the Levy Center.